Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to look at accounting for overheads. Accounting for overheads. Now, remember that I have already explained to you the elements of cost structure. And I have explained to you that indirect material cost, indirect labor cost, and indirect expenses are collectively called overheads. And so what is an overhead? We can simply put that overheads are aggregate of all indirect costs incurred by the business. So all indirect costs incurred in the production and process are called overheads. So we have indirect material costs, indirect labor, and indirect expenses, as I have explained earlier. Now, what I want you to understand with overheads is that overheads come with some terminologies which we need to understand. And then afterwards, we are going to look at how to handle overheads or account for overheads. Now, overheads are in two parts. I told you that we have factory overheads and we have non-factory overheads. So overheads, we have factory overheads and then we have non-factory overheads. Now, factory overheads are also called production overheads. And then non-factory overheads are also called non-production overheads. In other words, factory overheads are overheads that are incurred in the factory and is part of the production process. And in actual fact, factory overheads are part of production costs. But non-factory overheads are not part of production costs. They form part of total cost but not part of the production cost. Remember that I have explained to you the difference between production cost and total cost. Now, examples of the non-factory overheads, we have the selling overheads, we have distribution overheads, we have administrative overheads. Now, all these overheads, selling, distribution, administration, are not incurred in the factory. And therefore, this kind of expenditure that we incur are called non-factory or non-production overheads. But Production of factory overheads are overheads that are incurred in the factory, like factory power. If there is any depreciation of plant and machinery used in the factory, all these things happen in the factory and are expenditures incurred in the factory. So the overheads that are traceable or incurred in the factory are called factory overheads. While the other ones that are outside the factory are called non-factory overheads. However, what makes it an overhead in the first place is that they are indirect. Now, I've heard people talk about direct overheads and indirect overheads, which I disagree. There shouldn't be anything like direct and indirect overheads because we have direct costs and indirect costs. The indirect costs are called overheads. The, the reason why they are called overheads in the first place is because they are indirect. And so there is no way you come back and tell me that there are direct overheads and indirect overheads for me to believe you. There are direct labor costs and indirect labor costs, direct expenses and indirect expenses, direct material costs and indirect material costs. All the direct material, all the direct costs are called prime costs. All the indirect are called overheads. So you can't come back to tell me that inside the indirect, I should call some direct overheads and indirect overheads, which I disagree. So instead of that, you should rather call it factory and non-factory. People who want to call the factory overheads direct and then non-factory indirect. Well, that may be a way of helping them narrow their understanding to the concept. But it does not change the fact that overheads are indirect and they all remain indirect as, as much as they, they, they have to. And so that is what I want you to understand about the concept of overheads. Then I also want you to understand that after these classifications, you should also understand the stages in the overhead process. We have overhead collection, and then we have allocation and apportionment. And then also, we can talk about overhead absorption. Yes, overhead absorption. So when we collect overheads, we classify them, we allocate, and then apportion, and then we do absorption. So let me quickly take you through those steps, and then I will take you straight to the practical aspect of overheads. So the stages in the overhead accounting process. The first stage is collection of overheads. So overhead collection, 
And then we can classify the overheads. So classification comes next. So we collect overheads, we classify, then we allocate the overheads to cost center. So let me say allocation and apportionment. I'm going to give you the difference between the two. Allocation and apportionment comes next as the point three. And then finally, we are also going to do absorption of overheads, which I'm also going to explain. Absorption. And so we have overhead collection, overhead classification, overhead allocation and apportionment, and then we have overhead absorption. Now, what do we mean by collection of overheads? Collection of overhead means that you are actually incurring the overhead. So when you are incurring overheads in your factory or in your workplace, you are actually in, uh, collecting overheads. That is the meaning. Overhead classification. Overhead classification means that you are grouping overheads according to their category. Remember that I've even spoken to you about factory and non-factory overhead. And even under the non-factory, we have selling distribution. So once you are able to group them to where they belong or where they are in care, then you are actually doing classification. Now, the next thing I'm going to do in this video is to talk about overhead allocation and apportionment. And I'm going to teach you the overhead analysis sheet, which we are going to use to do this allocation and apportionment. And then later I'll talk about the absorption as well in a different video. Now, with the overhead allocation, what we mean by allocation is that you are actually allotting an overhead to a particular cost center or cost unit. And so when an overhead is incurred and you are certain that this overhead is incurred by Department A or Department B, then you can allot the overhead to the department that, okay, this overhead, if it is a, a utility bill and you know it relates to Department A, then you say that Department A, this one is allotted to you because it is directly coming from you. It is your meter, you have incurred that utility bill. But overhead apportionment, actually means when you are apportioning, it means that you cannot trace that it is for department A or B. And in other words, they are using the service jointly. So you are going to share for them according to the percentage of use. So let's assume it is utility bill, electricity, where the meter is one, but both departments are sharing the same meter. If the bill comes and the bill is, let's say, $10,000, and you know that based on the machines that are being used, by both departments, department A actually consumes 60% of the whole power, and then department B is consuming 40%. Then what you are going to do is that you are going to apportion, so that is what we call apportionment, you are sharing, that the 60% of the cost goes to department A, and 40% will be borne by department B. The act of splitting one cost to different departments because they both enjoy it jointly, is what we call apportionment. So apportionment is about sharing, Allocation is about giving to one without sharing. That is the difference. And so I want to pause on that. I'm going to talk about absorption later in a different video. Now, in this video, I want to rest on allocation and apportionment. And I'm going to teach you the overhead analysis sheet. And then we are going to do some allocations and some apportionment. But before I do that, what I will do is that I'm going to tell you the basis of apportioning some overheads. And so I'm going to clean this and then move forward to help you understand apportionment better all right okay so we are going to talk about basis of apportionment as i told you now what do i mean by basis of apportionment now remember that i told you i gave you an example where i said that let's say you have two departments department a and b and they have incurred a utility bill electricity expenditure they have to pay and you are sure that department a uses 60 percent of the uh, bill, uh, the power, and then B uses 40%. You have your own basis, 60, 40, you share. Now, that is when you know the percentages. In most cases, you are not going to get it that easy, okay? So the question is going to give you a basis, suitable, so many bases of apportionment. You are supposed to select the most suitable basis of apportionment to share. What do I mean by basis? Let, let me give you an example. Imagine that you have rented a building. Let's take rent as an example. You have rented a building and then you are using it for your business. Now, in the building, let's say this is the area for the building, the floor area for the building. So let's assume that it is divided this way. 
and then department A is located, is, is covering this portion. This portion of the floor is being occupied by department B. In other words, the one building, you are splitting it into three departments. And then this whole portion is for department C. So let's assume that the rent for the year is $10,000. Now what you are going to do is that, how are you going to share this rent? Remember that I told you apportionment means you are sharing the expenditure for them so that each of them will pay their own expenditure. Now what we are trying to say is that in this 10,000, you cannot say that if department A covers this portion, B covers that, and C covers that, it will be very unfair to share or split this into three equal parts for them to pay because department C covers a bigger portion of the floor and therefore needs to pay more than them. And so you need to apply the floor area occupied. So get the floor area. Let's assume that department A occupies 3 over 10 of the floor, 2 over 10 of the floor, 5 over 10 of the floor. Now what it means is that department C, will, you have already your business now. 3 over 5, 3 over 10, 2 over 10. So that is, will be the ratio by which you are going to share or apportion this $10,000 for the department. And therefore, the most suitable basis for apportioning rent overhead is called floor area occupied. That's the meaning, floor area occupied. Now, there are so many other uh, bases. For example, if you want to apportion depreciation of machinery, we look at the cost of the machinery, how much you bought it, and then you use that to uh, apportion the depreciation because each department may have a machine. So we compare the cost of each machine and then the ratio of the cost becomes the basis of apportioning the depreciation. And so these are examples of what I mean by basis of apportionment. Now what we are going to do, we are going to prepare an overhead analysis sheet where we are supposed to allocate and apportion overheads. In the question, they are going to give you so many bases of apportionment. And then they are going to list the uh, overhead also up there. Your responsibility is that you are going to find the most suitable basis for that particular, for each particular overhead. If you pick the wrong basis for a particular overhead, you get this wrong. And it's very risky. And so let's assume in a question there is rent and there is floor area occupied. You know, this is the most common basis or most appropriate basis. If that question has rent as an overhead and does not have floor area occupied in there, you don't bring it because you don't even get a basis. So if there is no floor area occupied, then you look for the most suitable or the next best alternative, the most suitable um, basis of apportionment for rent. And that is what I mean. So it is very technical. We always have to find the most suitable basis of apportionment for each overhead expenditure. Now, I may not have the space to write all the overheads and all the basis of apportionment for you to memorize. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to project something on the screen, some basis of apportionment and then some overhead expenditure on the screen so that you go through. So I'm going to discuss with you briefly, I'm going to project it on the screen and then all of us are going to look at it together so that once we go through and we become abreast with this, when we get, when we start solving questions and you see any overhead, you can point to the most common basis for apportionment. Okay. Yes, yeah, so the following are some common basis of apportionment for overheads. So look at the table that I have just projected on the screen. Look at that we have one column for overhead costs and the next column for basis of apportionment. So look at insurance of stock. If you see an overhead as insurance of stock, then the most appropriate basis is the value or the cost of the plant and machine. If you have depreciation on plant and machine, I said it, the basis should be cost of plant and machine. If the overhead is re repairs and maintenance of plant and machine, then the basis should be cost of the plant or machine. These are some basis. Let's look at the next one. If you have rent, rates, insurance, dep depreciation, and other expenses on your building, then the most common basis should be your floor area occupied or your floor space occupied. Just as I said, if it is lighting and heating, what are you heating? What are you lightening? You are lightening the building. You are heating up the environment. So it is also floor area occupied. If you see expenditure on air condition, it is floor area occupied that you are going to use. 
If you see fire precaution service, it is floor area occupied. That is what we are saying. Then let's look at these other ones. If you see canteen services, it is your number of employees or workers because the employees are actually going to eat the food from the canteen. So if Department A has more employees than Department C, let's say Department A, even though they have, occupy a small space, they have 10 employees, Department C have five employees, and you are going to incur canteen expenses. Then, of course, Department A will incur more than B because of the number of employees they have. So... When you have canteen services, it is number of employees or workers. Labor welfare, number of employees. If you see personal office, number of employees. General administration cost, number of employees. Supervision cost, number of employees. Industrial relations, number of employees. If you see medical or health costs, like they've used companies' money to, uh, or let's say health benefits for employees, that one, the cost of the health or medical treatment will be apportioned based on the number of employees for each department. Fringe benefits, salaries, and safety are all will be will all be apportioned with number of employees. Now let's look at the next one. If you see electric power that is not metered, electricity power that does not have a meter, then it will be horsepower of the machines. Because normally electric power is measured with the meters. But if you have electric power that is not metered, then horsepower of machines or the number of machine hours or the value or cost of the machines will be used to apportion that. If you see maintenance cost, maintenance, then the apportionment basis will be maintenance hours. If you see stores, overheads, normal store losses and material handling cost, that will be weight of materials or volume of materials or value of materials as the basis of apportionment. If you see stores keeping other related costs and normal store losses, then you use material usage or material requisition as the basis for apportionment. If you see transport cost, transport services cost, then you use the mileage. They will give you mileage of the vehicles, and then you use that. The mileage covered will be the basis of apportionment. If the electric power is metered, then you use the meter reading. So remember that I have spoken about not non metered electric power where we are going to use the horsepower and then the metered we we'll use the meter reading to apportion that then we have the clinical services that one we use either the clinical hours or the number of employees to apportion the most appropriate for each question lighting expenses we use the number of bulbs or number of light points or area occupied floor area occupied for lighting <laughs> and then if there are compensation to workers holiday pay we can use fringe uh, uh, holiday pay or fringe benefits. You can use the direct wages or number of employees. And then if you have the general overhead, you can use either direct labor hours, direct wages or machine hours to apportion general overheads. So these are some examples of overheads and their basis for apportionment. It looks plenty on your eye. Yes, I know, but the question is not going to present you with all of this. Mostly three or four or five will be presented. And then based on the expenditure, you, you, you choose the most suitable basis to apportion the expenditure. Okay. So this brings us to the end of the part one of our lesson on accounting for overheads. Now in the part two, which follows shortly, we are going to deal with overhead analysis sheet. I'm going to give you the format and then we'll take a question and then we'll solve. Remember to subscribe to this channel if it's your first time. Share this video. Let others also have a benefit. Until we meet again for the part two, it's bye for now.